Shout out to Chargers Unleashed, Sebastian Joseph. They know the vibes. We outside. You're listening to the Chargers Unleashed podcast with your host, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Ebner and Dale Wolf signing here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bolt Family, Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia, and Liquid Death. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein, we teased it during the 49ers preview yesterday. Dan teased at the very end of the show, said there was a special guest that was coming on board today. And obviously, we're going to tell you who that is and show you who that is in just a matter of moments. Uh, Dan, nobody decided to take a guess or take a stab at who it was going to be today. But uh, trust me. One person friends- guessed. One person guessed Matt Money Smith. Good guess, but no. Oh, OK. Yes. No. So all your questions will be revealed very soon. Uh, but Dan, before we get into this, uh, number one, how are you? Uh, number one, I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's Friday. There's nothing to be upset about. I agree. Big matchup this weekend going up against the San Francisco 49ers in prime time under the lights in Santa Clara. No, it's not in San Francisco. It's actually in Santa Clara. Uh, Jake, over under number of touchdowns we're going to see from Gerald Everett on Sunday. I'm going to put it at 0.5 over under. I say he. I say he'll go over that. I think he'll be him along with Josh Palmer. They'll be the prominent weapons for Justin Herbert this week. Obviously, have to be. Um, and yeah, I say I think he'll hit pay dirt. I really do. I agree. I need him to because I have him on my fantasy team. So I'm going to make sure that we ask Gerald Everett about this when we talk to him coming up next on Chargers Unleashed. But first, Jake, speaking of over under, our friends over at Bet Online. Let's talk about him real quick. Pay the bills. Yeah, just make sure you don't ask Gerald Everett to like, hey man, I got you on your fantasy team. I really need that. You know, they don't give a damn about your fantasy team. I'm, <laughs> you gonna know? Ask. I'm literally going to ask that question. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> Anyways, we want to remind everybody that Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends over at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA. NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf, head on over to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you do use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So, Jake, we mentioned it at the top. Special guest Gerald Everett is going to be joining us on Chargers Unleashed. going to talk about all things, whether it's going to be the Niners game. We're going to be talking about his kind of personal and team's performance so far. Talk about kind of what to expect Get to know Jared a little bit more off the field as well. Uh, Jake, before we get into that, though, we got to talk about our other friends over at Liquid Death, the Murdering Thirst. Tall boys over in the water aisle. Uh, talk about them. As we always continue to try to remind you all, and especially Dan Wolkenstein, because he needs to try this great product called Liquid Death. If you are going to your local grocery store, your Albertsons, your Kroger's, your Ralph's, whatever you happen to have around you, even your 7-Eleven markets, kids possibly still have these things. But if you're walking along the water and energy uh, aisle and you're looking to hydrate yourself and you happen to see a what looks like a handful of tall boys that are misplaced in the section, don't let your eyes deceive you because it's not tall boys. It is the newest sparkling water out there uh, that is refreshing refreshing every customer's mouth that it touches. Liquid Death is murdering thirst everywhere that it goes right now and does a great contribution to the recycling efforts all around the country. So go on out, go on out uh, and get yourself some Liquid Death. Again, the newest sparkling water that's out there. Head on over to liquiddeath.com backslash LAFB. Tell them Chargers Unleashed sent you and go get yourself hydrated. Gerald Everett, number seven, General Electric, coming up next on Chargers Unleashed. Well, week 10 of the Los Angeles Chargers 2022 season. Team sitting at 5-3 and three with the 49ers coming into town. Opportunity to get to 6-3, and three, head into a huge matchup against the Chiefs. We've been looking forward to this discussion for a long time. Number 7 on the jersey, tight end 1, not only for the Chargers, but on my fantasy team as well. GE General Electric, Mr. Gerald Everett, joins us on Chargers Unleashed. Gerald, thanks so much for hopping on. So close to primetime. How are you feeling? I'm good, man. I feel good. I was ready to you know, get to six and three, like you mentioned. 
Hey, we like to hear that. I think all Chargers fans would rejoice if we get to that point. Now, look, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about your team's performance so far through mm-hmm. nine weeks. We'll talk about kind of the current state of this Chargers offense, obviously the upcoming matchup. But just to kind of start this thing off, it's been a wild season for you guys so far. Like right. every team gets a ton of outside noise from pundits mm-hmm. and fans that they, they need to drown out, obviously. Yeah. This season has been kind of insane for you guys with how much adversity you've experienced. How would you kind of assess just how the team has performed so far this year? And, and talk to us just about like the resiliency that requires to where like, despite it all, you're still five and three. Well, we haven't cracked the surface yet. We all, we all are well aware of that. And, uh, you know, we just want to continue to just keep harping at it and keep hammering away, you know, hoping that we can finally see our full potential. But, you know, ironically, people are saying that we play down, play up the competition, but, you know, we just want to play our game and take it one play at a time. Take us back to, to last week real quick. You're going up against the Falcons, crazy game. You're back home in Atlanta. Like, what was that game like for you? They get the field goal at the end of the game to win it. Like, what, how was that for you personally? It was, it was, it was very exciting. You know, just coming back home. I haven't been home in a minute, but uh, just coming back to Atlanta, seeing some family and friends and, you know, just knowing they're all there cheering us on. And like I said, being back in the home state, I mean, it's always a good feeling returning back to your roots. But, you know, it was a business trip for us. And that was the main thing on my mind. You know, when I woke up game day, it was just no matter, you know, what happens in the game, we're just going to leave it all out there on the field and just give it our all. And, you know, we're not leaving without the win. So that was our motto and our mindset. And that's what happened. Now, Gerald, you've been with a few NFL te- team locker rooms prior to you coming to the Chargers, and whether it's right. the players, the coaches, the front office, how is the locker room dynamic yes. different than the previous teams that you've been on? Well, you know, in the NFL or in most professional sports, you give guys a lot of free time and you give them this, you know, financial freedom. It's, it's hard to keep them together, you know, keeping them connected. And when you leave the facility, it's hard to really kind of get all the guys to come together and do things outside of the building, like go out to eat and have cookouts and, you know, be social together and, you know, just hang out as boys, not just as teammates. But, you know, the different teams I've been on is we, we I've had some similar connections with my old teammates, but here it just feels like it's so organic, you know, it's not forced and it just happens so naturally. And, you know, we win, lose, we still stay connected. We all crack jokes with each other. You know, we can, we can be accountable. You know, if somebody makes a mistake, we can, be accountable for that, and we can all sit back and laugh. You know, we know what we need to attack for the following week. Now, I want to take. I want to talk off the field for a second. I and mean, you mentioned cookouts there just a second ago because we've all heard about Justin and his brisket. We've all heard about Keenan and his piano and his singing skills. Yeah. Uh, we've heard about Derwin and his Madden dominance, but I haven't heard much about Gerald Everett off the field. So, take us into your life outside football. What are some of the things that you like to do? Uh, how do you spend your off days? What makes you tick when you're not on the football field? I like going to the beach. I like being in the water or just anything that can help me just relax and stay calm outside of the building. I mean, it's such a stressful sport. And I try to find anything from stretching or yoga or just getting massages or just relaxing, you know, binging on Netflix or Amazon or, you know, Hulu or what what have you. But just, you know, I'm into a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm not really confined to one or two hobbies. Uh, Go around, might even take a trip to L.A., see some old friends, you know, go to some nice restaurants and check out some cool spots. Other than that, I'm just trying to get my body back where it needs to be and so I can be, you know, who, I, who I'm supposed to be on game day. I'm, I'm curious, and I, I think you hear a lot of people talk about this who don't play football, like how stressful and anxious like fans are watching as the team's marching down the field or a fumble right. or something happens. And just like the anxiety, like what is that like for the player? Like are you guys kind of numb to that? Are you used to it? Or is it still like DEF CON 10 for you guys as much as it is for fans? <laughs> Well, I think it really goes back to how you prepare, you know, how, how hard you push yourself. But for me personally, I mean, yeah, anxiety comes with the game, just with the wins and losses and the small opportunities that come when they do. And you want to seize opportunities in the moments and be there for your guys and, you know, represent your family well. And, you know, the journey that you took to get to this point, you don't want it to be for nothing. So, yeah, I think that's really what kind of uh, makes the game so it makes you so anxious when you're playing. And I'm sure the coaches will probably sit on the edge of their seats too. But, yeah, just as a player, I mean, there's so much that comes into one team. You know, you come to work eight, nine, ten hours a day. And, you know, we work on the weekend. So, you know, you got to make it worth the while. Yeah. And you mentioned kind of the, the start of this, like what what's your buildup. Like your style of play specifically, Gerald, is quite refreshing for lots of Chargers fans who have been clamoring for more athleticism and physicality and 
yards after the catch from the tight end position, and you kind of fit that bill to a T. Talk to us about, like, how you came to be the pipe of play you are. Like, where did that start? Just at a young age, playing in the backyard with my friends, you know, without the pads, obviously. But just, you know, we had a game called Throw Em Up, Buzz Em Up, and it was pretty much just every man for himself and just running around, going from end to end and simul- simulating the end zone and just trying to, you know, let no one stop you on your way. So I guess that kind of translated, you know, to where we are now today. I mean, I, obviously, every kid wants to go and play pro sports, but as you all know, I mean, it's a small percentage that actually get to get to that point and stay there and make successful careers out of it. So I, I've been blessed and more than fortunate to be able to do it and continue to bring those skill sets with me. Do you think that you would win that game? Or first off, have you played that game with the Chargers? If you did, who do you think would be kind of the, the stars of that game? Throw them up, bust them up. Yep. Um, I probably, uh, <laughs> probably Braden for Hoko, probably uh, <laughs> myself, uh, Khalil, uh, maybe Derwin. Uh, just, you know, the athletic guys, the more heavier guys, it'd be tough to take down, probably take everybody playing to bring them down like Braden. <laughs> you know, you're over that 300-pound mark. Tito as well. Well, Tito would probably be a tough one. But, okay. um, yeah, man, I mean, it's a fun game. It's not the safest, but, you know, you put pads on, and now it's all the more fun. All right, we got to tell your social media guys to get that game going for you. Um, <laughs> we're talking to Jalen Everett, number seven for your last names was Chargers, tight end one. Chargers roster specifically, especially on offense, looks mm-hmm. very different than folks I think expect coming into the season, largely due to injuries. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Donald Parham, Joshua Kelly, Rashawn Slater, you can you name them all, all mm-hmm. out. And your quarterback is fighting through a rib injury. Mm-hmm. You, Austin, Justin, DeAndre Carter, Josh Palmer, all kind of holding it down for you guys. Last week, outside looking anyways, it seemed like Justin arguably had his best game of the season. Stats aside, just eyeball test. How have you and the offense had to adjust either like personnel-wise or play call or even just in other areas yeah. due to the injuries you guys have faced? Well, me for one, I'm definitely playing more positions or just moving around the formation, different places, running different routes whether it be fly motions or getting sweeps or running routes I probably wouldn't normally run if Keenan and Mike were still in. But, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, one team. We, we all want to hold each other down. And until those guys get back, we're going to do as best we can to do exactly that. And, uh, you know, it's just up to the coaches to trust us, really. And, Gerald, this season for the Chargers, even though we're just coming into week 10 here, has already felt just absolutely bananas with the back yeah. and forth games that you've had, last second yeah. victories by kickers. Mm-hmm. Um, and even going all the way back, and now you had mentioned your time so far with the team, but even going back to training camp, has there been a moment for you that either just you personally, a moment that you have celebrated as a team that you can look back on to say, like, oh, that moment was just great so far? Oh, well, I, mean, I probably could say during training camp when we uh, joint practice the Cowboys, that was probably our first real moment as a team, just being excited, you know, going against somebody else, being able to just get the plays out and everybody being able to win matchups and just see how it feels going against a different color, you know. So that was probably one of the, one of the first memories that I probably had as a Charger, but to date, I'd have to say this past weekend in Atlanta or in Houston a couple weeks ago, those in the locker room after the game just felt really good. You know, like we didn't play our best game, but it was enough to get to get us the victory. And, you know, that's what we strive for. So until we really crack the iceberg, until we really see our full potential, I don't think we'll really have many more of those moments. Now, this offense obviously had a lot of lofty expectations heading into this season. Yeah. You guys have went through plenty of adversity on the offensive side of the ball, and we've seen lots of methodical drives, but lots has been talked about just regarding the relatively low number of chunk plays, shots yeah. taken down the field so far from this team. Um, Justin's yards per pass attempt ranks 30th in the NFL right now, mm-hmm. and as a team offensive, you guys rank 17th in yards per play. So just in general, I know that – Injuries can play a big part in this, but why do you think that this has been, you know, do you see the offense improving in that area or is it just something of a style of offense that people should expect that the coaching has basically sent messages to you guys as far as what you want to be as an offense? Well, statistically, you could be top five in the league. That doesn't mean that you'll be undefeated or I don't mean that you'll make the playoffs, you know. So regardless of Justice 30th in the league or our offense hasn't had many chunk plays, it doesn't mean that we will win the game. It's just who makes fewer mistakes and who plays smarter football, less flags, you know, 
and just kind of just key in on what needs to be done, make the halftime adjustments, and that'll that's what wins games. And out of nine games that we played, being six and three, I think the fact that we haven't played our best ball just speaks to volume. It speaks volume to what our potential truly could be. You know, you see the you see the undefeated teams, you see how well Philly's doing, you see how well the Seahawks are doing, and I mean they're just playing smart football. They're they're capitalizing on turnovers. They're playing component football and they're playing all together. And that's really what we're striving to do here. And we're slowly coming together as one team instead of playing as individual individual units. Now we're wrapping up with Gerald Everett. Gerald, thank you so much for for joining us today. Now you mentioned it, huge matchup mm-hmm. versus the really physical 49ers team that, that I think, you know, you have an opportunity to move to six and three, which would be wild. But but last I looked, like Vegas has you guys at a seven point underdog, I believe. Like, mm-hmm. what's the mentality for you guys going into this game? Well, I mean, you know, Vegas is always trying to predict something. And, you know, for those sports <laughs> betters out there, everybody's capitalizing on, you know, our actual livelihood. So, you know, Vegas is Vegas. It'll always be there when we're all gone, long gone into different careers. And, you know, once you guys are doing something else with your lives, too, Vegas will still be Vegas. And, you know the game will continue you know there'll be another another number seven in this jersey so you know while we're here we're just trying to just make the most of the opportunities and create those friendships and brother and connections with our brothers and with the coaches and that'll take us a lifetime really so do, I mean, do you take office, do you take that personally like being underdogs like that are you like oh okay like i can't wait for sunday no i don't really worry about what what, what the sports books are saying i mean it they're Smart just man. making really educated guesses based off of you know the past past games that we played but I mean, Vegas gets proved wrong all the time. You know, the parlays and the wagers and whatnot. I mean, that's just, you know, for giggles, really. You know, people make a lot of money off of it, but that has nothing really to do with what we do every day when we come to the facility. Gotcha. Last question for you, Gerald. Now, look, uh, either you as a person personally or as a team, what are some of your goals for the game? Look, I, I'm going to be that guy. I've got you on my fantasy team. I was pumped that I got you on there. Steal and you've been balling out for me. Yeah. You going to score a touchdown and help me walk out of this game with a victory? Well, me personally, I'm just trying to be the best player I can be for the team and you know, for my family and just really do what I need to do, make sure my job is done, come to my best capabilities. And nothing or anyone comes in the way of that, of me doing that. And uh, just being there for my team, you know, we all hold each other accountable, you know, for the fantasy league owners out there, or for all the other teams watching and, you know, everybody else, all the fans. You know, I'm pretty sure they'll be more excited to see us walk away out of Levi Stadium with that victory more than anything. So smart you know, answer. Yeah. Each week you'll see guys talk about fantasy. I need this. I need that. Plus or minus or over or under. But at the end of the year, I mean, I think they'll be betting on the Super Bowl more than anything else. Hey, we'll take that smart man. You've been around the block a few times. Gerald Everett, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a ton of fun. Uh, Best of luck Sunday night under the lights against the Niners. Can't wait to see you guys ball out. Best of luck. We'll talk to you soon, all right?